Welcome to the next video in the binary series. In the previous video, we learned how to convert numbers to floating point notation. In this video, I will show you how to do the other way around. So, how to convert a floating point notation number back into ordinary decimal numbers. So, let's say that you are given an 8 bits floating point notation, something like 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, now the first step that you would do in here is break this code into its constituents, break this code into its parts. Remember that the first bit is the sign bit. That's going to tell you if it's a positive or a negative number. The next three digits is your exponent. And this exponent, this three bits, two's complement notation will tell you how many places you need to move the radix point either into the right or to the left. And the last part, the last four bits, is your normalized mantissa. This is the number that you will have to apply the exponent to and move the radix point into the right place to be able to decode the binary number. So, step one, sign. Because the sign equals to one, we have got a negative number here. Then, step two, exponent. Our exponent is zero, zero, one. Well, that's a positive number because it starts with a zero and it's positive one. So my exponent is positive one. So I will need to move my normalized mantissa one place into the positive direction. Step three, my normalized mantissa is 0 0.1011. Apply the exponent to it, move the radix point one in the positive direction. So the number, the binary number that is given to me here is 1 radix point 0, 1, 1. Now I need to decode it back into decimal. This is 1, that's the radix point, this is a half, this is a quarter and this is an 8. So what I have in here is 1 plus a quarter plus an 8. Remember, how can we add together fractions? Need to make them to be the same denominator. So it will be 1 plus 2 eighths plus 1 eighth, which is altogether 1 and 3 eighths. And remember, we had 1 to start with, so 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 in 8 bits uh, floating point notation is the same as minus 1 and 3 eighths in decimal. Let's look at the next example, which is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Again, the first step is to identify the sign. Now the sign is 1 again, so we have got a negative number. Then step 2. Find the exponent. Remember the exponent is 1, 0, 1. Now this is in 3 bits to its complement, so the first digit tells me that this is a negative number, so this is a negative exponent. So it went through the inversion process. So what I need to do to find out what positive equivalent is in here is to re redo that inversion process. So copy the number until you copy the 1, then invert everything else. So that 0 becomes 1, this 1 becomes a 0, so this will be the positive equivalent of this negative number. And the positive equivalent in here, using the place values, this is equal to R3, so this original number is negative 3, so our exponent is negative 3. 
and step three using the mantissa. Now the normalized mantissa is the last four bits. Remember, it always starts with zero point one one zero zero. But what it tells us that the exponent was negative three, so the computer was told to move it three places to the negative direction. So what does that mean? One place, two place, three places. Fill in the zeros. So the original number was a very small number. Zero radix point zero 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 one one zero zero. So what is this number? Use the place values again. This is one radix point a half a quarter an eight a sixteen a thirty two and the rest of them are zeros so we don't really need to bother about them. So this number here is basically the sum of a sixteen and a thirty two. Again, how can I add fractions together? I need to make them to be the same denominator. So how can I make 32s from 16s? I just need to double it. So it's altogether 3 over 32. And remember, I had a negative number because my sign bit was 1. So 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0 as an 8 bits floating point is exactly the same as minus 3 over 32. Let's do one more example of this floating point notation and let's look at what number is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Step 1, find the sign. The first bit is 0, so this is a positive number. Then comes step two, using the exponent. Now our exponent is one, zero, one, which is a negative number. So again, going through the inversion process, copy the number until you copy the one, then invert everything else. And this is again positive 3, so this is still negative 3. The difference here now will be that my mantissa is slightly different. So let's look at the last step and deal with the mantissa. So our normalized mantissa is 0 0.1011. The computer was told to move this mantissa or the radix point, 3 in the negative direction. So it would need to move it 1, 2, 3. So 0, 0.00. 0. So the original number was 0 0.00010111. 0, 0, 1, 1. The accompanying place values are 1 radix point a half a quarter, an eight, a sixteen, a thirty-two, a sixty-fourth, and a one twenty-eight. So what I need to add together now is one over sixteen plus one over sixty-four plus one over hundred and twenty-eight. Now again, to be able to add them together, I need to get them all to be the same denominator. Now this is a common denominator because I can get to 128 from doubling all of them but at different numbers. So from 16 to get to 128 what I've done I doubled 1, 2, 3 times. So that is basically 16 times 8 going to give me the 128. So what this is telling me that 8 over 128 is the same as 1 over 16. 
64 and 128, there is only one doubling point in here. So that is just 2 over 128 plus 1 over 128. So this is all together giving me 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11 over 128. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 in 8 bits floating point is the same as 11 over 128. Remember, this time bit was 0, so this is a positive number, and for positive numbers, we don't write out the positive sign. Now we went through the 8 bits floating point notation, and you might find it still a little bit confusing. That's absolutely fine, because this is like an orchestra. You're pulling together everything that you've learned about binary numbers. So you're putting together the 2 bits complement notation, some normal mathematical knowledge about moving decimal places, applied to in binary numbers, and so on. So this is probably one of the most difficult questions that you can get in binary numbers. But once you understand them, then you will really know what needed to be known about this system, and you know how the computer looks at the binary code. And now it is your turn to try these conversions. You will find the answers to these questions shortly after the questions appear. So these are the practice questions. And here are the answers.